up, YouTube? You, YouTube? Mr. King coming at you live from the studio. So what we have today, how would you describe yourself if someone asked you? And then two, what is one piece of evidence that all organisms are related? Please pause the video now and answer. Next announcement, we do have an evolution exam tomorrow and Friday. And our last unit is Teen Talk, which will be a lot easier. So that's some good news. What we should be able to do today is explain and set evidence that all organisms share a common ancestor. Um, first, I do want you guys to go back. Classwork, we're going to finish that assignment from yesterday. So go to Tuesday, Evidence of Evolution, and then pull it up. So yesterday, remember one piece of evidence, embryos. A lot of organisms look the exact same when they're only a few days old. Right after conception, we looked a lot like a chicken or a fish or a tortoise or a salamander or a rabbit. That's one piece of evidence that we're all related because we all start out the same. And then another one was homologous structures. So basically similar bones represents, you know, similar structures. And if we have similar arm structures, then we probably had an ancestor with similar bones too. Evidence three we did was DNA. So basically all life on earth uses the DNA code and you can compare how closely related people are based on their DNA. And you can do the same thing with animals. And now we're at part four. Part four, please watch this video. It'll talk about five body parts that we don't need. That is what the video is about. Try and think of humans, some body parts that we don't need. And then why do you think we have them? Or why could our potential ancestors need them? Yep, so that's four. The last one is fossils. Most of you should know what fossils are. It's basically a trace of life, either like a plant or a bacteria or an animal. And after a lot of pressure and time and heat, you get a fossil. And that's basically evidence of how our history is. And I had two graphics below to show the evolution of humans. This one is just like a record of how old some of the humans are. This one will show you kind of like the transition from old human skulls to new ones. So think, what do you notice about the skull sizes from the beginning to the end? And then two, is there selective pressure to have a bigger brain? Think, is there pressure, was there pressure on ancient humans to have a big brain? Yes or no? And then what do you think that pressure was? <clears throat> and then last one, does fossil evidence make you think humans are related to other species. Once you're all done with that, please hit turn in for evidence of evolution and then pull up the notes. Sadly, we won't finish these notes today. It's called evolution notes, evidence of evolution notes plus review. So you're gonna learn about today, how do we know evolution is true? I'm gonna go over the evidence right now. Just remember, we're talking about the theory of evolution here. So since populations change, then we assume in the beginning, we must have all come from, from the same organism and changed very slowly over time into very separate species. So evidence number one, embryos. So lots of animals look the same before they're born. That's evidence. Since they look the same and we came from the same beginning, it's likely that we have the same ancestor that looked the same as well. Evidence number two, homologous structures. Since we have similar bones, that's evidence that we have similar ancestry or we probably had similar ancestors that also had like a long upper arm or like two bones between our forearm or like a wrist and some fingers, just like these animals. Clue number three that we're all like is DNA. So just so you know, a lot of biologists will analyze DNA because the more similar your DNA, the more closely related you are. Like Tia and Tamara here, they have 100% of their DNA the same because they're identical. And then humans and chimps actually share about 99% of our DNA. So we're the most like, we're the closest related animals. And then also a big piece of evidence that we are all related on some level is DNA. All life on earth uses the same DNA code. So that's an example that all life 
came from the same beginning because we all use DNA. Clue number four is called vestigial structures, which is basically anything that we can live without that our ancestors actually needed. And this is evidence that one, that we've changed over time because we got it from our ancestors. And two, you know, eventually we probably won't need a lot of these useless things because evolution will select for us not having wisdom teeth or appendixes if we don't really need them. Part five, fossils. Fossils is a really concrete way to see clearly that organisms have changed over time. You can trace back, like these horses here, you could see the horse's skulls have been getting bigger if you go to more recent horses versus really old horses. That's just a clear example that you can see that organisms have changed over time. We will do the evolution review tomorrow. So don't turn it in. We should have the five examples of how we're related. And then we'll finish the rest tomorrow. Thank you everyone for staying with me the whole time. Please don't forget the 10th server before you go. Bye. See you tomorrow.